the kingdom of God. Jesus used that expression over and over again. In the only prayer we have from Jesus' own lips, he taught us to pray, Our Father, may your kingdom come. And most of his parables begin with the phrase, The kingdom of God can be compared to a man sowing seed, yeast at work and a batch of dough, the sudden discovery of a treasure hidden in a field, a tiny mustard seed that grows and grows into a huge shrub, and so forth. Jesus also said things like, Seek first the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added to you. And the kingdom of God is in your midst. Today, many Christians think they know what he meant. Most Christians tend to assume that when Jesus spoke of the kingdom of God, he was referring to heaven, that spiritual place where, after the death of our bodies, our souls live in communion with God. In this view, the kingdom of God is not here and now on this earth, but is an otherworldly, non-material place of reward. This understanding is reinforced by the Gospel of Matthew, which substitutes the word heaven for the word God. Thus, in Matthew, Jesus speaks over and over again of the kingdom of heaven. The question is, what did Jesus mean by that phrase, the kingdom of God? How would his first century followers have understood him? Are the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven the same? or two different realities. Here's the heart of the problem. In English, the word kingdom is a noun, and nouns describe persons, places, or things. So we might assume that the kingdom of God must be a place, like the kingdom of Spain, or a heavenly domain beyond this material world. In the past, for example, many Christians assumed that the kingdom of God was the Holy Roman Empire, ruled over by Christian kings and princes. Or perhaps the kingdom of God is referring to a thing. Again, in the past, many Christians assumed that the kingdom of God referred to the Catholic Church. But wait, Jesus didn't speak English. He spoke Aramaic, and the Aramaic word we translate into English as kingdom isn't a noun, it's a verb. That Aramaic phrase is better translated into English as God acting as king. That is, God ruling or reigning. The kingdom of God is not a place or a thing. It's an event. It's something that is happening. It's God present and active. God here in our midst reigning over our lives now. So, what are we asking God for when we pray, may your kingdom come? We're asking, may the time come, O God, when everyone everywhere accepts you as their king, as their ruler. We're asking God for the time to come when we all allow God to reign over us. The mission of Jesus was to announce the arrival of God's reign and to invite each and every one of us to enter it, to accept it, and to allow God to rule over us. When that time comes, when all accept God's reign and rule and live accordingly, there will be justice and peace and an end to suffering and death and everything else we humans long for. By the way, In the Gospel of Matthew, the substitution of the word heaven for God is done for a very simple reason. The author of Matthew and his audience were Jewish, and Jews are forbidden to speak the name of God. So they find circumlocutions. Instead of saying Yahweh, they will use other language, such as the word Adonai, Lord. Whenever you read the Bible and see Lord spelled in all capital letters, That is actually substituting for the not-to-be-spoken holy name, Yahweh. Another circumlocution is simply to say Hashem, the name. Likewise, heaven is a substitution for the word God. Kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven mean exactly the same thing. Jesus expressed this teaching about entering the reign of God in other ways as well. For example, he said, Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. In other words, be daughters and sons of your heavenly Father. Be like your heavenly Father. God is generous and welcoming, so you be that. God is compassionate and merciful, so you be that. God is unconditional love, so you do that. When we consciously choose and try to be like our heavenly Father, we are allowing God to rule over us. Let me repeat that. When we consciously choose to try and be like our heavenly Father, We are allowing God to rule over us. In other words, we are choosing to enter the kingdom, 
the reign of God. Here's another way of thinking about this. As the very first book of the Bible teaches, each one of us is created in the image of God. So, and this is important, the more we become like God, the more fully human we become. Becoming like God, generous, compassionate, merciful, loving, is becoming more fully human, more oneself. You want to enter the kingdom of God? You want God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven? Then be yourself. Be your true self. The real you is made in the image of God, so when you think and act like our Heavenly Father, in whose image you are created, you become more fully human, your real self, and at the same time, more fully divine. Strangely, then, these all describe the same event, entering the reign or kingdom of God, becoming more fully human, becoming more holy or godly, becoming my true, authentic self. So, the reign of God, the time when all accept God's rule and act like true sons and daughters of God, begins small, like a mustard seed. It is already present, but not always easy to recognize. But one day, it'll grow into a huge shrub, and all the birds of the air, all the peoples of every nation, will come and rest in its branches. All will be welcome. Or, God's presence, God's reigning over us, is like yeast in dough, which causes the whole batch to rise, to reach its fullness. We cannot see the yeast at work, but when the yeast has finished its work, we all see the result. That's what God's reign is like. Seek first the kingdom or reign of God, enter God's reign and allow God to rule over you, make it your highest priority to learn and to do God's will, to be an authentic daughter or son of God, real chips off the old block, as they say, and you will have everything you need and more. The healings and other miracles of Jesus are signs that God's reign is present. God's power working through Jesus brings health and life. In the Gospel of John, these mighty acts are specifically referred to not as miracles, but as signs, signs of God's powerful presence, sign that the kingdom or reign of God is present, signs that invite us to accept and to enter God's reign. Eternal life is another expression that Jesus used that's related to the kingdom or reign of God. Whenever we recite the Apostles' Creed, we proclaim, we believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. We believe that when Christ returns to judge all the peoples and nations, God will recreate and renew all of his creation. Suffering and death will be no more. As the final chapter of the book of Revelation describes, heaven will come to earth. There will be a new Jerusalem and God will eternally dwell with his people. Here, eternal life is not up there in heaven, but here, on a newly remade, recreated world. The Catechism of the Catholic Church puts it this way, By death, the soul is separated from the body, but in the final resurrection at the end time, when Christ returns, God will give incorruptible life to our body, transformed by reunion with our soul. Just as Christ is risen and now lives forever, so all of us will rise on that day. Here is how theologian N.T. Wright puts it. God's plan is not to abandon this world. Rather, he intends to remake it. And when he does, he will raise all people to a new bodily life to live in it. That is the promise of the Christian gospel. For the Gospel of John, the promised eternal life is not only futuristic, but also pertains to the present. In John chapter 5, Jesus says, He who hears my word and believes him that sent me has eternal life and comes not into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. In other words, anyone who accepts the message of Jesus and his invitation to enter the reign of God is at that moment entering into the eternal life of the future. So Jesus invited one and all to enter the kingdom of God, the reign, the rule of God. God is powerfully present now as Jesus' healings and other miracles signify, and all are invited to allow our God to be their king, to reign over them. How? By attempting to learn about God and to be more like him, to truly be his daughters and sons. 
those who do so have already in some mysterious way entered into eternal life, into the life of the world to come, the new creation on earth that God will remake when Jesus returns. So remember, be yourself, your true self, the one made in God's image. Learn more about God by looking to Jesus, the one who is so fully human, he is divine. He is the perfect image of the Father. Be your true self and enter into the reign or rule of God, the kingdom of God, which is eternal life.